This is a podcast about one woman's mission to help entrepreneurs and business owners write better business books. Each week, we tackle your writing excuses because there are excuses too, and help you beat the blank page of doom so that you can write the book that will grow your life and your business. Now, here's your host, Vicky Fraser. Hello, and welcome to, I was going to say the 8,000 author show then. Might be. Give me yeah. a year or two. Yeah. I'm Vicky Fraser, and this is my husband, Joe. Hello. Hi. Uh, today, we are drinking beer. Hooray for beer. And Nia, which is Ooh. which is not beer, <laughs> which I call Nia. Misery beer. Misery. Well, it's really nice. I actually don't like lager anymore if it's got alcohols in it. All the more beer for me. Yes. So what are, what are we reading at the moment? Oh, God. Doing? I'm still reading, and I will be for the like next five years, about three lines of N.K. Jemison's The Obelisk Gate before I fall asleep, and then I fall asleep. Okay, well, I'm not sure people need a massive update on that, except to say that it's... You still enjoying it? Yeah, it's a good book. Cool. I mean, I'm reading it in very, very small slices. Yeah. But that's just because I'm not reading much at the moment, because I'm knackered. Yeah, same. Oh, speaking of being knackered, what did you do on Sunday, Joe? Oh, uh, I was in a competition. I was in a uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu South American ground karate competition in Hereford. Struggle cuddles. Struggle cuddles. Extreme cuddling. Involuntary and yoga. You won gold. I won my division. He won gold in his division and he won silver in the youngsters division. Yes. Which is so awesome. Yay, Joe. So I am the most skilled of the unskilled old people around my weight who wanted to turn up in Hereford last Sunday. Hang on. Did we do this in the last podcast? Maybe. It feels familiar because I feel like I said, I feel like I said, where's your bling? And you were like, it's in the house. And I said, oh no, sorry if that's not news to you, dear podcast listener. <laughs> but I'm still excited. I'm still proud of you. Um, anyway, back to what we're reading. N.K. Jemisin's Obelisk Gate. Which three, is great. Three words a day. Yes. And I am reading Iolo's Revenge by Diana Ashworth, which is brilliant. I keep, I keep, the part of the reason Joe is only reading three words at a time is because I keep poking him and saying, Joe, Joe, this is really funny. And then reading you out bits of this book, don't I? Yeah, that's great. I like that. Uh, especially because I'm going to make him read it afterwards and he's going to be like, I already know it now. I've read this book. It's great. It's about a retired couple who buy this rumbly old farmhouse in mid Wales and it's all falling down. Like literally, I think it's even worse than Dingle was. Kind of sounds familiar. And then they end up accidentally sheep farming. Also familiar. <laughs> Except they've actually got a legit small flock, so they start off with ten ewe lambs, and we've only got our three boys. Yeah, um, our three boys are going to struggle to uh, reproduce flock. Yes, because they they don't have they don't have the nuts anymore. No matter how hard they try. Yeah, um, but yeah, so it's all of it's their story of moving to Wales and kind of the the locals all going. What on earth are you doing? <laughs> Which, again, is kind of familiar. Feels familiar, yeah. <laughs> and it, But it's beautifully written. And because this is a podcast about how to write a book, um, it's this is this is really relevant. It's beautifully written. She has a really great turn of phrase, Diana Ashworth does, or she has a great editor, or both. Um, but it's, she's very funny, and the stories that she tells are very funny, and she writes very engagingly, and it's super easy to read, and it's delightful. Hmm. really enjoying it so i can thoroughly recommend iola's revenge by diana ashworth cool yeah it's actually um our book club book in our local book club in town uh, so i will be able to go and talk about it yes. good. and uh, non-fiction i'm still reading atomic habits by james clear and i'm still loving it i'm nearly finished though i'm going to be moving on to the next book uh, which i will talk about hopefully in the next podcast <laughs> but this week we're talking about why you should do something hard mm. No smut, please. And the idea behind this podcast is quite often people will say to me, well, why should I write a book? You know, what's what's the big deal? Why should I write a book? Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons that I give people, or one of the reasons... Oh, hang on. And we're back in the room. Okay, so what's going on is, and the reason that we're about to repeat ourselves a little bit is because we've now got no idea where we got to. Um, I have allowed my MacBook to accumulate crap all of the things. All of the things. And I've been repeatedly repeatedly ignoring that your disc is full um, because we've been trying to... Oh, to be fair, I've needed Joe's help and he can't drive a Mac. So we've, we've been trying to back it all up on my backup drive. Anyway, long story short... Um, Halfway the, through the recording, the Mac just went, nope, no space, stop. 
so yeah, I had to stop recording the audio. So we're just we're just recording video now, which I can strip the audio out of. Anyway, that was a really boring explanation. So why write a book? <laughs> um, there are many reasons to write a book, many, many reasons. People often ask me why I write a book. Um, we're going to cover a bunch of them in over the next few podcasts. Mm-hmm. So doing a little mini series. But this podcast episode, this episode, I want to talk about one of, I think, the really good and underrated reasons to write a book, which is simply because it's really bloody difficult. Okay. That's a reason to do something. Yeah. Okay. It is. Would you like to know why? I would. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, why is it why is it a good thing to do difficult things? It's a good question. Let's Joe, what was it like training for your jujitsu? Unpleasant. Painful. Difficult? Difficult. But ultimately rewarding. Quite satisfying. Because you won gold. Yeah, yeah. That's just a marker of success though. It's yeah. just a marker of progress, not uh... Everybody loves the bling. Yeah, it's quite good bling. I've got a whole trophy up there on top of my bookcase that says that I was the best instructor trapeze person in the UK and the UK... The UK... Aerial Performance Championships. Yeah. And that was really hard. That was one of the hardest things I've ever done. Mm. Do you remember when I was training for the Reflections show? Yes. And that was traumatic as well as difficult. Um, And it was just... It was just really, really hard. And... Every, you know, almost every session, it's really easy to just go, you know what, I'm not going to go in today. Yeah. I'm not going to go in today. I'm going to, I'll catch up tomorrow. And you, you don't do it. And, you know, there's a bunch of reasons why you don't do it, but it's, it's really, really good, I think, to do really difficult things. Not just because you've got that reward of winning your competition or whatever at the end, mm-hmm. um, but because it, I kind of don't want to say character building because that's really wanky, but it's true. Hard things do shape who we are. Doing hard they, things. They stretch what you are capable of. They really do. They make us realise what we are truly capable of, which is far more than we think. Mm. It's really, really, really far more than we think. Because there's there's no way that... When I was training for the trapeze competition in September last year, I was at the studio pretty much every six days out of seven, wasn't I? Pretty much, yeah. And... I was training for hours as well at a time. It wasn't just like going and do a quick, some days it was going and do a quick run through, but other days it was like really intensive. I'm going to work on this bit over and over and over and over again until I just wanted to explode the world Mm -hmm. because it was really hard. And sometimes it wasn't even a little bit of fun. And sometimes it was really boring because I think if one one of the things that I can't really remember where I read it, um, but one of the things that I read recently was if you want to become super good at something, if you want to become really successful at something, you've got to be comfortable with being bored. Right. Because a lot of being good at something is just doing the same thing over and over and over again. So if you look at professional athletes, they will drill the same the same trainings and the same movements. And the, you, know, you know what I mean? They'll do yeah. it over and over again. And it's boring. It is boring because your brain craves stimulation. And if you're doing the same things repeatedly, you're not getting any of that stimulation. Mm-hmm. So... It's much easier to kind of reach for Netflix or reach for your phone and mess around with Facebook or whatever. Um, so yeah, it does. It teaches doing hard things. I think really teaches you what you're capable of, which is a lot more than you think. Would, sure. Would you agree? I totally agree with that. What other hard things have you done that have kind of made you realise that you're capable of a lot more than you thought? Ooh, all kinds of things. The things I, I enjoy doing difficult things. I enjoy doing difficult things with with people. So, um, like being married to me, for being instance. married to Vicky, always a challenge, <laughs> very difficult. Um, rock climbing. Oh, uh, rock climbing is a really good example. Yeah. Cause uh, you get to go out with your mates and eat cake in the countryside, which is nice. Um, but you also get to be in really strange places in quite stressful situations, um, in fear of your life. That's, that's kind of challenging. Hi, Jamie. <laughs> Jamie. Jamie does rock climbing. Yeah. He does trad climbing because he too is a lunatic. Trad climbing's ace. That's the best bit. It's not. Okay. So here is, again, here is like a, a hard thing. So we were trad climbing a few years ago and it is a few years ago now. I haven't climbed for ages and this is partly why. <laughs> <laughs> and we were out at Stanage Edge, which is a beautiful, beautiful, very famous uh, rock climbing. You, even if you're not place. climbing, go, yeah. go and see Stanage Edge. It's, it's lovely. It's good walks along there. It's fantastic. It's in Derbyshire. Uh, Yorkshire. No, Derbyshire. Peaks. Peaks, yeah. Uh, near Sheffield, Chesterfield. Anyway. <laughs> North of here. <laughs> North of here. Um, 
Yeah, and we, we've gone. We've gone out there to do some trad climbing. And trad climbing is... So if you've ever been rock climbing indoors, everything's bolted. It's really safe, even when you're leading, which means that you're clipping the rope as you go. Even when you're doing that, it's quite difficult to die. Yeah. You, you have to try quite you, hard. You might crack an ankle or, or, or bust an elbow or something, but you're probably yeah. not going to die. No. But trad climbing... Um, means that you are going up and putting your rope up and you're putting your gear in. There's no bolts, there's nothing to hang on to, and you you probably will die. You, you, <laughs> okay, you probably So will. you're putting little little aluminium wedges into cracks and then attaching your rope to that and, and little spring loaded things into holes and it's it's And it's, occasionally your head. It's it's into it's, a, big it's crack. a slightly it's a sketchier kind of experience than sport climbing. Because in sport climbing the the safety kit is not going to pop out of the wall. No. But in trad climbing, who the hell knows? Maybe. Yeah. And that my friends, is what makes it so horrifying. Because I'd done a couple of really easy climbs and I'd led up and they were super easy. And I was like, oh, this is great. I'm feeling really confident. I'm going to, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, right, what's the next one up? And I just went on to like another climb that was a uh, level of difficulty harder. And the other thing I didn't realize is that unlike indoor climbing, Chad climbing difficulty goes up exponentially, <laughs> and not, not, not linearly. <laughs> Um, so I kind of gone up to the next level and it was considerably harder. And when I say harder, the climbing itself isn't the problem. You know, if, I, if I'd had a rope up to the top, I would have run up it. It would have been fine. Yeah, no problem at all. But the problem is that it gets harder and harder to place the gear as well as as well as the climb. Um, my hands are... Look at my hands. <laughs> <laughs> That's, this is my sensory mem- memory. <laughs> If you can't see, I'm holding my hands up to the camera and showing you just how... I know, I know. But that is my fear response. And that's me remembering what happened on that cliff face. Because I had got halfway up and... It was about halfway up, wasn't it? It was a little more than halfway up, which was the problem, really. I'd, I'd, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'd placed some slightly dodgy gear on the way up, but I hadn't... And then I got to a point where I was like... I don't know what happened, but I think it was a bit slippery, a bit greasy. The, the really overly climbed routes tend to get a bit greasy. Yeah, people, people all yeah, over them. People all over them. Uh, didn't help that I think there was a woman on a couple of climbs over absolutely shrieking <laughs> like a banshee. I fucking wanted to punch her, which doesn't help because it's really hard to stay calm in the face of other people's panic, like wafting over you. Yeah. And I, I couldn't get my gear in. So you've got, you've got an aluminium wedge, you're holding on with one hand, there's a crack somewhere nearby and you're trying to make this thing stick in the crack so that you can put your rope through it yeah. and and provide yourself with some modicum of safety should you fall off. And one thing that you do when you place gear is you give it a bit of a tug. The problem with giving it a bit of a tug is if it falls out and you haven't got a good grip on the rock, you're going to just fall off backwards. And bear in mind, I didn't trust anything at this point because I was I was not thinking... St- yeah, you're, you're, the rational bit of your brain, the calm bit of your brain has just... It is shut down. ...dribbled off over it there was, It was screaming in a corner. It was quite literally rocking and screaming in a corner. And the thing about... The problem with that is, it, it, I'm kind of laughing about it now, but if I had fallen off, I would have decked out on the floor. You would have smashed into the ground, I would have yes. smashed into the ground and I might well have died. From... 40 feet up or something. Yeah. So my, my fear wasn't entirely unjustified, but panic is never helpful. So <laughs> so what happened next was that I had decided that, you know, fuck it, I'm going to die anyway, so I might as well just abandon all my gear and run for the top. And I basically free climbed. So what Vicky then did was this wedge that she failed to put into the crack, she just went, fuck it, nailed it into the crack, didn't put her rope through the, the clip and just... Legged it for the top, basically. I climbed in a panic. I think I... It's like... <laughs> and everyone on the ground who's trying not to freak Vicky out, because Vicky's clearly freaked, everyone on the ground is like looking at each other in horror, thinking, what on earth is she doing? Why didn't she clip that? Why is she doing this? And, and you know, just like, okay, well, if she falls off at this point, it's it's a trip to the hospital, if we're lucky. <laughs> yeah, and, and the, <sighs> problem, the problem with all of this is that when you're in that position, it's really difficult to think. Mm. Like, you can't you can't think. It's really difficult. So those guys were all on the ground going, what is she doing? Why is she doing that? And all that's happening is that my lizard brain is screaming at me to get out of this situation whatever way. Yeah. And you know the other weird thing that happens is that your brain is like, just let go. Just let go. Just jump off. <laughs> and so, I don't know if that's ever happened to you, but it's only happened to me a couple of times. That was one of them. And I had to fight the urge to just let go just and jump off. Ship. Yeah, because it's like, I don't know, it's, it was weird. But anyway, I made it to the top. Didn't die, obviously. Still here to tell the tale. I made it to the top and just cried. Just sobbed at the top. Just cried. And then Joe came up afterwards and was like, that piece of gear that you placed was absolutely bomb proof. You yeah. could have hung a house off it. <laughs> 
rope to it. <laughs> so um, that was fun. Anyway, yeah. the whole point of telling Character that building. story is, but yeah, it is because you know what? Even though I didn't deal with it very well, I did deal with it. Didn't die. Didn't die. And the lesson that I took away from that is that Vicky doesn't do trad climbing. <laughs> did someone just walk past our window? No. Okay. I think they did. And now I'm really properly freaked out. Add Dingle is quite creepy at night and, and I need curtains. So this is gonna, this is gonna, this is going to push up my curtain buying and making. Anyway, so hard things. It makes us realise what we're truly capable of, um, which is far more than we think and sometimes a little bit less than we think. Um, and it also makes us makes us realise, it makes us appreciate what things are worth doing well. Mm-hmm. One of the things that's worth doing well is is placing gear and then clipping your rope to it. Maybe doing 20 climbs at a level before moving on to the next level. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Oh, I've I've stopped sweating now. (laughs) Oh my God. That memory. Oh, totally freaked out. Anyway, so yeah, do something hard because write a book because it's hard and it will make you realize that you are capable of writing actually really well. Mm Because if you practice, 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 you will get better at writing. It will make you realize what's important because as you write and as you're doing this really difficult job, you'll realize what's important to you in your business and in how you serve your clients and customers and in where you want to go next and what you want to do. You will learn a lot about yourself while you're writing your book. It, it's a huge learning experience, isn't it? It is. It's so much more. You will get out of it so much more than just a published book at the end of it. Mm. You really will. Um, and another re- another reason is because you, you know, you do realize what's important and I think that's it. I think that's important in itself. That's too many important. Too many important things. Yeah. Um, because the the stuff that matters in life is difficult. You know, you don't. Nothing that comes easily really is is kind of long term worth not, having. Not particularly valuable if if it just it's, drops out of the sky into your lap. Yeah, that's great. It's very nice. But you don't value it. Mm. It's like I I think that's probably I know there's got to be a lot of research done into what happens to lottery winners and stuff, but I think that's probably why quite a lot of them don't really do very well mm. in life after they've won an enormous sum of money. They haven't earned it. They've done nothing. They've done nothing for that money. It's just landed on their laps, and it's uh, I would imagine that's a bit of a weird place to be. I don't because I've I've often thought I don't think I would I don't think I would like to win the lottery. I was worried what it would do to me. Oh, I I kind of would. Really? Yeah, because I think I would be able to put loads of it, just put it, well, be able to finish the dingle. Again, no, I don't know. It, it would be too easy. Cause one but of we'd, them... we'd still do it. Yeah. We'd still do it. It just yeah. wouldn't be slow. Well, that's true. I don't know. I don't know. And then put the money in the bank and have a really nice pension. But that's a good example as well of, of something that's really hard. And, you know, we knew that it would be hard to take on a house that needed this much work we knew that we didn't realize how hard it would be sometimes because i think the other day after the after the great olive oil incident oh. um i think you had had enough of the place hadn't you for a couple of hours and oh. i've had a couple of moments where i'm like you know what? i'm done i'm done with this yeah dear listener do not ever drop a liter bottle of olive oil onto a work counter onto a kitchen counter uh because that's horrific Glass yeah. bottle broke and a liter of oil went everywhere. And you had to clean it all up because I can't do. I can't. I have this thing where I, I like, I can't even have a massage because I can't stand the feeling of oil hmm. on my skin. And so there was no way I was going in that kitchen. And it was like, I kind of felt a little bit guilty, but also I didn't break it. So, <laughs> but I'm really sorry about that. Thanks. But that that was a hard thing that you did. It was horrendous. It was absolutely horrendous. Yeah. Don't do that. So anyway, back to you know the important things in life being difficult. This dingle is really hard work. It's really expensive and it's incredibly rewarding. But we are learning things and we're doing mm. as much of it as we can yeah. ourselves. And when it's finished, it's going to be magnificent. It's going to so. be magnificent. We're going to love it. Um, so yeah, and it's really tempting to give up when things get tough. Mm-hmm. Like I said earlier, you know, we've both had days, I think, in the dingle where we're like, I'm just done. Let's sell it and buy something that doesn't need any work. Um, and that would be easier. That would be easier to sell <laughs> this place than to carry on doing it. Oh, yeah. I love it. Yeah. I'm not going to do that. It would be, it's easy to just decide that you're done with writing your book and that you'd rather go and watch Netflix, you know? It's, it's, we are wired. It's human nature to give up when things get tough. Yeah. yeah. We are wired to be lazy and take the easy route because, you know, we, we, 
developed, we evolved in a time when food was scarce, resources were scarce. You save, had to eat as much as possible, save your calories. Yeah, we are wired to be lazy. The human brain doesn't want to expend energy working its way through difficult problems when it can just sit and watch Netflix. Mm-hmm. Um, it's easy to sit and watch Netflix, but it's not important. Other online streaming services are available. Amazon Prime, for example. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's not important though. You know, the sitting and watching Netflix, sometimes it's great. It's really enjoyable to spend an evening just taking your brain out and, and watching. But, but how much better is it after you've, you know, achieved your thing? Yeah, much better. Best bit of my week is is Friday night after after training at the club. We we come home, we have a pizza and we, we have a beer and we watch Netflix. Yeah. It's beautiful. I count my knee. It's and amazing. You, and even then it's like... You know, what we're watching on Netflix is not important, but the experience of just chilling out, yeah. that's, our, after, that's our treat for the it's week. It's after a long, difficult week. It's after a good bit of physical exercise. I've probably been duffed up by a whole bunch of people. Yeah, covered it's in other men's sweat. Covered so. in other men's sweat. I mean, I've had a shower, but... Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's easy to sit and do that kind of thing. I'm talking not as a treat, though. It's much easier to do what I think the majority of people do, which is just turn their brains off, sit on the sofa and veg for the evening and they do that most evenings i don't think our listeners are i don't think our listeners are normal people no but i think that normal people do that and because it's easier because it's the easier thing to do than to learn Mm. a new language or learn an instrument or you know run a business or any of the other things that we're all doing that normal people don't do Mm. and i don't blame them for it because we're wired that way but it's it's not important if you if you write a book or learn to play a musical instrument or learn a new language that's difficult it's mm. difficult, but ultimately it's it's really rewarding. And you learn what you can do. It also, writing a book also makes you see yourself in a different way as well. Mm-hmm. You will get to know yourself better. The way you write, the way you look at the world, um, your you know, your weird way of expressing ideas if you're me. <laughs> Talk about tiny beetle steps. Stuff that you just didn't notice before. And I think it teaches you how to think as well. And we're gonna go into a bit more detail about that next week on next week's episode. But I sometimes don't even know what I think about something until I've written about it. Sure. Because writing is thinking. Writing is is slowed down, serious thinking. Yeah. I'm having to articulate. You learn your subject better. You you research around it. You become the expert. You articulate it clearly. You edit it. You sort yeah. it out. You do it well. I think it's, it's, it's a seriously developing behavior. Yeah. So when are you going to write your book? <laughs> anyway, moving swiftly on. Um, so yeah, now I feel bad. I think <laughs> summing, summing, summing up. Uh, we never. I don't think anybody ever really achieves great things if we just take the easy route the whole time. No. Um, you know, pe- the people who are super successful. If, if success was easy, everybody would be successful, and everybody is not. Very few people are really. Um, and you know, however you measure success by, you know, it doesn't matter whether you me- measure it with how much money you've got in the bank or you know what I don't care what you measure it by but I don't think most people would you know if you want to achieve greatness if it was easy everybody would do it everybody would do it yeah you're probably not going to achieve all of your goals by taking the easy route no 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 so if you want to be at the absolute top of your mountain as I want to be at the absolute top of my mountain then we've got to do the hard things we've got to figure out how we get there and then do what we need to do. And that's mm-hmm. the difficult part because you've got to do it every single day. I, I write every single day. Mm. And even if it's only 100 words of gibberish, I still write every single day because that is what I do. I am a writer. So if, if you want to, you know, if you want to be at the top of your tree, if you want to be the person that everybody goes to in your industry, you've got to figure out how to get there. And then you've got to figure out what step you need to take. And then again, and then again. And, and those then, steps might be training. It might be qualifications. It might be writing a book. It might be... You know, being in the trenches, it might be taking on the big optimistic projects that you're really not sure about and they terrify you. It might be all kinds of all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Maybe all of those things. Yeah. But you've got to do it. That's the point. Yeah. Especially if it's hard. Yeah. It's really rewarding. It's not immediately rewarding. Immediately, it's often really horrible. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you do it anyway. And, you know, we're not wired for future rewards. We're, we are wired for instant gratification, which yeah. is why Facebook is so successful <laughs> why processed foods do so well you get that hit yeah. of salt and sugar yeah so yeah you want, you want to find a way to reward yourself immediately by doing the hard things now which is quite a tricky feat i think so what's this week's takeaway joe um takeaway would be find out what you're capable of um 
stretch what you're capable of. Yeah. Go beyond what you think you're capable of. Um, make a decision. Write a book. Do something else. Do something hard. Do it scary. Um, get on with it. Yeah. Cool. Right, that's that then. Right. Sorry, that was a bit rambly and disjointed, but there was a whole technology fail in the middle of it and and then a ghost of some kind outside. Um, and then very sweaty hands, which are fine now. No, I'm Good. not talking about dying on a cliff. So, <laughs> next week, we are going to be talking about learning how to think because writing is thinking and that is another reason to write a book. Cool. Yeah. And what's going on in my world? Well, I am planning a big book launch for January. There's going to be loads of cool swag. Nice. Available for people who are going to order my book. And I'm going to be launching a new course, which is called the Moxie Book Kickstarter, which is going to be um, mm. an interactive thing that I'm going to be running, you know, alongside with you. I'm going to be helping you along because the idea is to build your writing habit and get everything you need ready so that you can sit down and start writing your book. Nice. So by the end of the Moxie Book Kickstarter, you will have a writing habit. You will have the confidence to know that you can write your damn book and then use it. And you will have... A really detailed outline so you can just sit down and start. Sit down and do the thing and you won't be faced with your blank piece of paper. No. Oh, and you'll also have, um, I will help you schedule yourself as well so that you are not scrabbling around to find 10 minutes here and there because you will never write a book if that's how you're going to try and do it. Cool. Yeah. And that will be perfectly um, placed to prepare people for the writing retreat that I'm planning in Fuerteventura in late February. Nice. The end of, right at the end of February. So if you've got all of your outline and everything, what better than to come to sunny Fuerteventura as opposed to you know minus three degrees wet UK and write the shitty first draft of your book sounds nice it does doesn't it I'm really looking forward to it yeah it's gonna be great I've already got I'm only taking six people I've already had four people say that they want to go so nice. I'm not I haven't got you know haven't had their cash yet so I don't know if all of them are gonna go but Four people already expressed interest. If you want in, you better get on with it. Yeah, if you want in, drop me an email, vicky at vickyfraser.com, and tell me and you'll be the first person that I, I let know when I'm opening it up for booking. Cool. So, right, what else is there to say? If you like the podcast, go to iTunes and subscribe. Five stars. Five stars. Helps us climb the rankings, helps us help people like you. Um, or go to Stitcher or wherever it is that you subscribe. Yes. And if you've listened to every single episode of this podcast, can't imagine. You are... a you were already used to doing difficult things. Yes, you. <laughs> <laughs> Frankly. How very dare you. Um, email me with your postal address and I will send you a special silly gift to say thank you for listening to every single episode <laughs> of this. Um, everybody who's had the gift thinks it's delightful, which makes me happy. Marvellous. So that's really cool. And we'll be back same time next week. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening. You can find links and show notes on the website at moxiebooks.co.uk forward slash podcast where you can also sign up for the best daily emails in the multiverse and find loads of free resources to help you write your book. We'll be back the same time next week with more tales from the book writing trenches and the latest on what the tiny sheeps have been up to. 